In this video, we're talking all about IP in the parks. Is it better for a company to own a certain IP when they're creating this, the, the, these theme park experiences, or does is it more advantageous for them to not own the IP? You know, we're going to talk about. There's been a lot of conversations on on like Twitter and social media about this. I thought it was a fascinating conversation. We're going to talk about it, break it down up next on OG Fifty Five. <laughs> Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. It is Friday, which means it's, well, it's it's payday for me. I don't know if it's payday for you, for you fellas or those at home. So I got to play a money drop real quick. Here we go, payday. Brand new money, brand new hundreds. Got a bunch of zeros, like a bag of new funyuns. There we go. Happy payday, everybody. If you, Happy if payday. You yeah, let's do it. So um, I'm going to introduce my fantastic panel, and we're going to dive right in. Michael Ebba is back in the house. Ebba, how you doing, brother? OG, I am doing fantastic. I'm so happy to be here. And it is, again, like always, honor and pleasure to be here, my friend. Absolutely. It's always good to have you, sir. If you could remind everybody where they could find you on social media, sir. Of course, you can find me on Instagram, Michael Ebba, and then also on Twitter, slash X, at Michael Ebba, 1991. There it is. Follow this man. Follow this man. It's a great Down year. <laughs> <laughs> and down below, we got the one and only Slimer. Slimer, welcome back, brother. Hey, thanks so much for having me back, man. And uh, hey, every day in the Grove is a great day, right? Exactly, exactly. So if you can remind everybody home where they can find you on social media, sir. Yeah, so you can find me right here on Orange Grove 55 on YouTube. And on the X, you can find me at Slime Square 84. There it is, there it is. And last but certainly not least, we got the one and only Tones. Tony, Tony, Tony. Welcome to the show, brother. If you can remind everybody at home where they can find you on social media. Yeah, man. Of course. Thank you for having me. Like always, love being on here, Give, giving the uh, the little newbie side of my uh, my versions of what I bring to the table. But I love it. I love uh, coming on, uh, guys. If you guys want to follow me on social media, tones underscore TV on all platforms, and follow the podcast, Bad, Bad Thoughts Podcast, and uh, follow Bad Thoughts Studios as well. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, uh, tones, Slimer, and. Um uh, a gentleman, uh, Colin, Colin. Yeah. Colin, we did a great video. It's up right now, actually on YouTube on the bad thoughts studio. We talked about fandom. If the fandom is getting too toxic and like the conversations around, you know, various properties, um, in like the nerd culture space, really, really good conversation. I highly recommend everybody check it out. So bad thought studio, that video, uh, just dropped today. All right. So let's dive into the topic at hand. So it's, Let's dive into this. I think this is fascinating. There's been a lot of conversation on like X and like YouTube and what have you. I think it was Theme Park Universe, actually. They, they did a great video, um, was it yesterday? Uh, uh, Wizard, um, where they were talking about like, you know, when you have these big companies, so you have a Disney, you have a Comcast, and they own certain IP, right? And they utilize them in their parks. Is that a better approach to this whole theme park space or is it better for the, the, the for the company to not own um, these IPs and work with another company in creating, you know, the these attractions? You know, like when Disney first started doing this, this was like back in the eighties. Um, they reached out to like George Lucas, like Lucasfilm, to 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 work on like Star Tours and like you know Indiana Jones Adventure and what have you. And and honestly, that was a very successful collaboration. You know, at that time, Disney did not own those properties; they collaborated. We see it recently with Universal; they're collaborating with Nintendo. Very successful collaboration with Nintendo seems to be working. Um, but then you can point to things like Galaxy's Edge, you know. Um, there's a lot of good there, but there's also a lot of criticism. A lot, a lot of stuff fans don't like about Galaxy's Edge. Now, Galaxy's Edge is something that, you know, they built while under the Disney umbrella, while when Disney owned it, right? So, I'm going to start with you, Eva. What do you think, man? Like, do you think it's better, almost, at least from like a creativity standpoint, maybe? Right? We can dive into the financials too if you want, but is it better to, for these companies to not own these properties and sort of work with the outside? 
because you figure a lot of these companies, like for example, JK Rowling, like she, she created this property, right? So she's like invested maybe if universal doesn't own them and, and, and she, and he, they have to work with JK, the, the, the product will be better. Is there a case to be made there or maybe it doesn't matter? What, what are your thoughts, Eva? Um, no, I, I, for sure. I think there is a case to be made there because if you're, you know, having a licensed IP, right, you're, you're for sure working with the creator of it. And that I think, in my opinion, is going to maintain the uh, high quality standards that that owner uh, wants. So like, you know, Super Nintendo World, Harry Potter, right, they're going to have their influence and input like, no, you know, this is how the characters are. This is how this is supposed to look, you know, you can't just go and change everything that we have, right. But on the flip side, I think in the long run, I think overall it's better to own your IP. So that way, you know, you can do whatever you would like to it, right? But with Disney and Universal, right, we're talking about high quality parks. You know, I expect high quality regardless if you have a license or your ownership. So I think like with Star Wars, right, I think the reason why that fit into Disneyland for so long is because that is a, you know, high quality story with great characters, adventure. It's very uh, family friendly. So that fits very well into Disneyland. Um, so with Universal, you know, I, I do think like that a lot of these things fit also as well into that park. My only thing is, is like, okay, you have Universal, Comcast, Warner Brothers, right? Like, does it give the same type of uh, nostalgic or generational IP um, recognition as people grow up? Like, oh, Harry mm -hmm. Potter, you know, but that's Warner Brothers, but it's in a Universal Park, you know? So. Right like where my thought process is yeah and you make a good point like walt disney kind of set this whole standard of this like kind of like this uh like what they call it the flywheel right where it's like you create the movies or the shows right and then then they live on forever in your theme parks and this has been a very successful formula for for not just you know disney but a lot of other companies even universal to some degree you know it, it works and it's a proven it's a proven formula um so it's 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 interesting you know like i think that look i think there is a benefit i think there are some some pros to outsourcing to, to you know licensing out these properties and i agree with you eva i think that like when you have the creator of that property like a jk rowling she's going to ensure that quality it's her baby right but at the same time i also feel like you can you can kind of have the best of both worlds because let's just say um let's just say universal comcast were to buy the harry potter franchise they could still utilize jk Rowling though if they choose to do so like it, it's not like a necessarily an either or thing right like even disney with like with star wars okay maybe they didn't consult george lucas a whole lot with that land but they could have like i don't think george lucas would have been like no nah, dude i'm good you know what i'm saying like he would have i'm sure he would have worked with them so it's like do you necessarily have to not own it for that collaboration to work I feel like you can kind of do both, right? I don't know. I mean, what, what do you think, Slimer? You feel like uh, <clears throat> pros, cons, owning it, not owning it? Where do you stand with this? Oh, there's a lot of pros and cons to owning and not owning. Um, kind of piggyback off of what you're saying, right? So, like, let's say, you know, let's say they were to buy Warner Brothers, right? And now the Harry Potter franchise is theirs. They don't, they're not, they're no longer required to collaborate with JK Rowling unless she wanted specifically in the contract that said, Hey, any new parks have to be approved by me first. But if they were to, if they were to eliminate that, the, the, um, you know, the, the level of approvals, right? Cause I would imagine that like, if they collaborate with JK Rowling, there's a very stringent level of approval that's required to have to come by her part. Right. If they eliminated that, then they can streamline the uh, universal creative process of actually designing the land and they can uh they, they have more creative liberties as to what they can do but here's the only problem now they fall within that wheel that flywheel that you were talking about the walt disney created mm -hmm. now since they own the ip outright they have to invest in the movies to get people built up and pumped up for the movies so that way they can justify maintaining a land or creating a new land so Whereas Warner Brothers shored up the investment for Harry Potter. Now they have to shore up all that, that, that production investment for Harry Potter to the tunes of hundreds of millions of dollars. And then they have to maintain that franchise through continuous investments decade over decade over decade, like Disney do, now does with Star Wars. With Star Before, Wars yeah. yeah, George Lucas used to pay out of pocket for that. Now Disney has to pay for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, and I you know I think the the one mistake that uh, Disney made with Fox Studios was just buying it outright for seventy five billion dollars, as opposed to just picking and choosing the IPs that they wanted in the park, buying the licenses, using them for ten to twenty years, and then when they whenever 
you know, whenever the guests felt, you know, whenever they noticed a guest, um, guest uh, interest in those attractions started to dwindle, you know, they can, you know, come to some term, like some end of agreement term with a company or something along those lines. Now, if I can go just a little bit longer and tell yeah. you, I'm going to pass it to you. Hell no. The, 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 <laughs> the downside of owning your IPs only that, that, that whole, that strategy um, and, and not licensing IPs is that you're stuck with just those IPs, you know? So it can become very, uh, it can become very limiting as far as what you can do. It's that, that's where universal benefits from just getting licenses whenever they want and, and then, you know, letting them expire and then doing something completely different. Whereas Disney's really stuck. And you can tell that the conversation is always about the Disney IP as well. And we always balance it off like the same four or five as to, you know, what they can introduce in the parts in some kind of way. But yeah, well uh, said. Well said. You bring up a great point there, Slimer, where it's like when you license out, you only have to really worry about from a universal standpoint. You really only have to worry about your investment in the park side of it. Right. But if they owned Harry Potter, now they're getting into the mess of like rebooting the franchise and Fantastic Beasts didn't do well. So now do we, what do we do with those movies or what, how do we, how do we proceed with the movie? Uh, you know, how do we proceed with the, with the franchise now that Fantastic Beasts didn't do well and yada, yada, yada. Now they're in that whole mess, right? Where now they don't have to worry about any of that. They just build a Harry Potter land based on well, whatever, you know, they, they want basically or, you know, in, in conjunction with J.K. Rowling. But it's so much easier than worrying about the studio side as well. Right. So great, great point, Slimer. What do you think, Tones? What, what, what do you feel, brother? So I'm kind of where they're at. But um, I think another thing that we're missing here is um, if if they own like if you own these IPs and uh like for disney for instance you own multiple multiple ips now you have to pick and choose what you want to put on your in your park and right. if you have multiple you know a big big ips you're gonna you're just some are gonna go to waste and some you know it, it's just gonna waste a lot of money and once they start investing money into an ip that might not be that popular and then they put a different ip in the on uh, the back burner it just it, you're just wasting more money that way now if you just lease the ip out and have it for x amount of years or whatever the you know the the contract is you have that ability to not the, you have that ability to not uh put it in your park if you don't want to like if something happens with you know, um with uh harry potter harry potter land you're and it, it no longer is a good attraction i mean obviously it's a great attraction but if, if something happens and it's not good no more like you own it now you can't take it out and and go that route of having to lease it and then the contract's over so there, there's definitely pros and cons to it um and kind of what ebba was saying you know the if you own the ip you have the free range to do whatever the hell you want to it yeah and on on the back side of that is if you don't own the op the ip you pretty much have to do what they allow you to do and yeah, that, right. that that part is where those you know the pros and cons can be good or bad so it just depends on what ip you're uh you're going for yeah and like yeah exactly like and there's a lot of risk right when you own these ips and you're investing all these you have to invest millions and millions and millions of dollars into maintaining these franchises so they're relevant right mm -hmm. that's expensive and it's risky we've seen it with, with yeah. star wars and what have you now there's more payoff in the end if they can work out that formula. Like, yep. you know, I think at the end of the day, when Disney has, when they own Marvel, when they own Star Wars, when they own these properties, and if they can kind of work the formula out, like the math on that, where it's like they're getting everything kind of running on, on all cylinders, I think the payoff is probably ultimately better than, than, than Universal would have with licensing. But it's also riskier with with anything, you know. What I'm saying you put more money in, it's more risk. So it's like it's also it's also um, a more of a liability at the same time. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's a big give and take type of thing, right? So you know, like in it's like in Tokyo, right? You know, Disney they license the IP, so for sure that saves them money, correct? Yeah. In, in Tokyo over there, so because that's the all thing, they do. OLC, all they do is park stuff, you know. Right. So in regards of Galaxy's Edge. The big problem with that, right, was Disney, they overpromised and underdelivered, right? You do that at any place, you're going to have a problem. Right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. whether it's Disney, Universal, Six Flags, whatever, you overpromise, underdeliver, and you not, you know, um, bring forth the money or the talents 
to do these things, you know, like you're going to get, you know, backfire from your audience. Yeah. Exactly. And that was the big mistake, I think, with like Galaxy's Edge, right? Where it's like they, they, they got on the D23 stage and they were selling it to the fans, right? They yeah, were like, this I remember is, that. Remember that? I mean, it was, we're going to, we're, it's going to be like, you know, um, we're going to have like the Twilight chicks everywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's going to be like the giant Banthas and all this stuff. And they were really, really selling us on it, right? And then the land opens and it was like the land itself looked beautiful. The rock work, oh, yeah. the design. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's, I mean, it yeah. still is. It looks great, but yeah. there was no life to it. It didn't have a pulse. It didn't have a heartbeat, yeah. you know? And it's like me, you know, see that that's the thing. And it still doesn't really have a heartbeat. I mean, no. I was just there like last week and it still doesn't have what they were promising, like with all the aliens and the creatures and, yeah. the, and the droids, you know? It's like, it's like, it's like an abandoned town that a bunch of locals <laughs> took over. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that was funny, but that was. <laughs> yeah, I know, absolutely. Or it's like it's like buying like a like a you know like a six million dollar home, beautiful home, like mansion, right? Yeah. But you got no pictures on the wall. You got <laughs> you got you got no couch. You got no. <laughs> you, you you have a house, but you don't have a home. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying yeah. it's not yeah. lived in. And, yeah, and that's what and this it, is. Is that is that what kind of Disney is doing with the whole Fox thing? Like I haven't seen any kind of like big project when it came when it comes to Disney and Fox. Dude, such a waste bought, of they, money. They bought them out, right? If I'm not mistaken, brother, they nobody know, nobody knows what they're doing with Fox. <laughs> yeah. So see that that's that's kind of what we're we're at right now. Like it, like yeah. in our conversation, like it, it was it a waste for them to purchase Fox because they're not so. doing much with it. Yeah, they're not doing much with it. I think they yeah. bought Fox with the mindset of like to fill the streamers. Cause they had Disney and Hulu or Disney plus and Hulu. So they thought, okay, we can buy Fox, get that library and pump that into the streaming services. But now the yeah. streaming services is like, you know what I'm saying? It's like kind yeah. of risky and, 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 and really like fo the Fox stuff. It, th this is the thing when it comes to the park side, Fox really hasn't add, added much to the equation because what we already had Pandora, right? Um, we already had Star Wars. I mean, yeah, Star Wars because Fox owned, I think, the uh, the first movie, A New Hope, right? Mm -hmm. So they already had Pandora. They already had Star Wars. They already had Marvel represented in the parks, except for X Men. Like the Fox purchase for seventy billion dollars. What do they bring to the table in terms of the parks? Not much. Not much that you didn't have before. I mean, I guess now you can make a Planet of the Apes land, which would be pretty dope, actually. But like, I mean, but for seventy billion. I don't know. Well, 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 see, I, see, I think to Tone's point, that's where Disney probably instead of buying the entire thing, just cherry picked what IPs they probably like wanted to eat, like either buy out or license, and then use those in the parks. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Well, well, OG, now that you mentioned Planet of the Apes, man, Planet of the Apes would be a perfect addition to uh, Animal Kingdom. I mean, if they were to use any property you put in a park mm -hmm. right now, with the problems that they have in Animal Kingdom, right? The fact that it's you know it's like the uh, you know it's like it's like the abandoned fifth child of the family. Um, Planet, Planet of the Apes would be awesome. I mean, that's a very successful movie franchise. All the movies have been very high quality. Um, they're coming out the new movie, uh, what, this year, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Dude, I mean, strike while the iron's hot. I mean, you put a Fox picture in there, be risky, be bold. I yep. think that's, I think that's the kind of change that they really need incorporated at this time. Cause everybody's, I think everybody's, um, the, the the idea of putting Indiana Jones or Encanto in Animal Kingdom are stale at this point. Like they've been talking about it for so long without any mm -hmm. actionable, uh, you know, effort. It, it's it's stale. So by the time that it actually opens in twenty twenty eight or whenever it opens, you know, four or five years from now, I I just don't know how relevant they're going to be. But um, <laughs> Michael, you had said something earlier, which I I, I forgot at this point now, but maybe <laughs> I'll remember. Maybe I'll maybe I'll, maybe I'll remember a little bit, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure I had something to do with like the collaborative component of creative, but it'll it'll come to me. Where where is oh, Pandora uh, supposed to be at? Oh, well, park. Yeah. Okay, so Pandora is in Disney's Animal Kingdom in Florida. What, what, weren't we talking? I don't know if we were talking about something about them putting uh, Animal King or Animal Kingdom, um, Pandora in the LA park. In yeah, park. yeah. My uh, Bob Iger announced uh, about a year ago now at the quarterly earnings call back in like almost exactly a year actually that we're getting <laughs> Anaheim is getting a pan is, is getting an Avatar experience, but he didn't oh, elaborate okay. as to what exactly that experience is going to be. 
personally, I believe it's going to be a land of some kind, like similar to what we, we see over there in Florida, but it could be something different. But um, I mean, tell, I'm telling you, Tones, I mean, if you ever get a chance to get down there, that land will blow your mind, bro. I mean, it's, they got these floating <laughs> mountains with these, with these waterfalls and stuff, dude. It's, no, slime, no, am I no, right, bro? It's crazy, right? R- real quick, would, now, would you care if they did like a copy and paste from the one in Florida? Or would you want something a little bit different than the one in Florida? Um, I think, I, I wouldn't be mad because that one in Florida is pretty awesome, but I think they probably should, uh, do something a little different, you know, because their park over there, this animal kingdom is is acres upon acres. I think it's like 600 acres or something, right? It, it's crazy. Wow. So for me, it's like the scale of it all. Like if you're going to put something like that in Disneyland, we don't really have the space necessarily. You're going to have to rework it if you're going to fit it, no matter what park you put it in, you know? Yeah, so, true. yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's well, it's not 600 acres. I think animal kingdom in its totality is a little over 300 acres. Okay. But- but yeah, it's it's a big size. I don't I don't think that it would fit into. Uh, they wouldn't be able to build it to scale properly if they put it in Disneyland the way that it is now, which is I, which is why I think the way of Avatar. Oh, my dog just came in. Uh, which is why I think the way of Avatar would probably be a better fit for that area. I do remember what I was going to say. And OG, this is for you, my man. Okay. So so be, we're talking about licensing IP. Okay. Right. Disney's the king of licensing IP because they've licensed out the Disney company ip to three parks overseas and they have done the best with the disney with the disney property better than anybody even better than disney what do you think about that that's interesting so you're talking about like the licensing deals they have like with like olc right the oriental land company with yeah yep that's fascinating that's a great point slimer that's a great point that is the tokyo disney resort is the king that's the 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 gold standard of theme parks right now. I mean, and it has been for years, you know? Oh, so, so that, that park's better than all other parks? Oh, bro. The world? Yeah. They got, they have a working volcano over there, bro. Ooh. I mean, it just, I mean, let me see if I can bring it up, bro. Like, I, I did, I did see, um, I forgot who's, uh, Candid's the one who, um, told me about it, but the Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm not sure if it was the one in Tokyo or, that's the Shanghai one. Shanghai, there you go, dude. dude that Pirates that of the one, Caribbean ride is, whoo. yeah, that was all. And I watched it on a YouTube video, and I was impressed. I can't yeah. even imagine what it would look like in in real life. Oh, bro, I'm telling you, this, this volcano goes off like every so often. It's just the oh, detail. Shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. And Disney doesn't even own this park. Basically, this this company called Oriental Land Company, they own it, they build it, they do everything. But the Imagineers create the attractions and they pay Disney a licensing fee to use their characters. Wow. So, but they're doing, I mean, that's why Slimer was like, look at the job they're doing over there, dude. It's like out of control. Just like, imagine this is- if that was over here. Well, oh, so, so here's the thing. I'm, so I have a theory on this, right? Yeah. Uh, so I have something. Okay. So on this, my theory is it's like this, right? Let's say, okay, let's say tones. Let's say you give something to OG, right? And you're like, here, take care of this, right? Now, mm-hmm. OG is going to probably take care of that better than how you take care of it because he wants right. to make damn sure that it's in perfect, pristine condition by the time he gives it back to you or you're right. or if you see it. So I think that kind of mindset. Take, over take there care is- of my heart, OG. Take care of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's that's a great analogy. I like that. Um, and then back to the Pandora thing with the whole, you know, working with the creatives, right? So now that Disney has Avatar, if we get a Pandora in Disneyland, we're, we're gonna probably still have James Cameron be there to like be involved with the process, right? So oh, that's yeah. what I think. That, you know, if if these companies don't have okay, if these companies still if they own something like Star Wars or Harry Potter or whatnot. I think they should still kind of look for guidance to the original creator as for inspiration on what their vision for the world would be, right? Because they're the ones that created the world. So, okay, yeah, we own it now. We do what we want, but let's still respect the IP and uh, and see what where the stories or characters could go and how things work in that world. Yeah, no, absolutely. They, they but, should. They absolutely should work with the creators more. Like, I don't know what the involvement of George Lucas was in Galaxy's Edge, but I think it was minimal at best. And I, if I was running Disney, I would have had them. I would have had him like boots on the ground, like, yeah, like real. I mean, you know, like this guy built the universe. You need to have him at at the table. I think, you know, right. Let, let, 
Real, real quick, Eva. Uh, oh no, you go ahead because it's. I'm gonna be changing subject, so you go ahead. Oh, I okay. I was, uh, it, was, it was just a theme about to, uh, Slimer's point. It was um, it was about taking action, right? The themes like that. Disney is not taking action. At least I don't think so. In my opinion, they're doing like a lot of talking and talking and talking, but nothing's getting done. I'm like, okay, guys, I'm tired of hearing about this announcement, announce of this, announce of that. We're gonna do this. I want to see it. I don't care how much money you're spending or how many many billions of dollars you have or whatever. I just want to see you start to build stuff. So well, that's kind of where I'm at right now. No, I'm with you. I think we're all on the same page because it's like that's the thing too. Is like, look, a lot of people were blow. Like, oh, here's the thing, right? When you announce 2.5 billion for Anaheim, and it's over 10 years or whatever, it's like okay, that's great. But we, but how do you even know it? What, what, like, see, this is the thing. A lot of fans were saying, well, that's not enough. Well, the thing is, I don't know if it's enough or not because I don't know what they're planning on building. Yeah. Without knowing what their plan is, we don't know. If it's one land or two lands, well, you know, 1.9 billion or or two billion dollars or whatever it is, that's a lot of money that will get you pretty far. But if it's yeah. going to be spread out over like eight projects over 10 years, that that's not so much. So what they're building matters as to how happy or upset I am about the dollar amount. And that's the problem I think I have with the dollar amount is that without knowing what they're building, you really can't, there's no context to it. Exactly. So, yeah. 2 billion yeah. means nothing if I don't know what you're doing with it. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's like I can have a thousand dollars right in my wallet. Well, I mean, how far that goes depends on what I'm doing, right? If yeah. I'm, <laughs> is that is that is that is that one is that is that one stripper that's a ten or is that ten strippers that are one? You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, that, that that's the issue. But you're right, Eva, too. Like with this Daddy Josh stuff, Josh tomorrow. He gets up there. He doesn't really announce anything. You know, it's a promise, 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 or not even promise. It's not, it's not even promises. It's like, just what if maybe, you know, and it's like, you got to Like they got to start committing to stuff. They got to start building stuff. And this is the thing, dude, with universal to their credit, they, they announced Epic universe. They're building something tangible for their fans. Uh, Disney needs to do that for its fans. You know, let's, let's get something built. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right. gee, I got a, I got a new name for uh, D23. What's that? We're gonna call it Blue Skies over Epic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you. Exactly. So, so I got I got a question for you guys then. Um th think of an IP that you guys would uh that you guys would want, like let's say in Disneyland. Think of an IP that you guys would want and in, inside the park, right? Now mm. ask yourself, would you guys want that licensed or would you want to buy it outright? Like for mm. example, for example, of course, everyone who follows me, I would love a fucking Game of Thrones, some kind of Game of Thrones um, ride or experience inside of a park. I think that'd be amazing. It would make tons of money, especially all the content that's coming out with Game of Thrones. That would and you know, and I would want to um, buy the IP because I think it's something that could continuously be something that people want. So, what what would you guys do? You know that that's that's a great tones. You like this is a great question. Okay, so for for me, like I, what I would do is actually build like a third park at Disneyland. They, we have like seventy five acres over there at the Toy Story lot. What you could do, and I'm not going to bring up Westcott again, I promise. But like <laughs> I would bring Westcott, up Westcott. <laughs> Westcott. No, but what I would do is do like if you could like uh, build like a Heroes and Legends park over there too. I think that'd be pretty dope. And you can utilize some of these properties that Tones is talking about, right? So you can license out like things like Game of Thrones. You can license out things like Lord of the Rings. These really mm -hmm. epic sort of like no pun intended epic, right? <laughs> but these really epic sort of properties. And I think in its own park would be really, really cool. I would love to see stuff like that come to uh, to the parks. What, what about you, uh, Eva? What, what are you feeling? Oh. If you can out, if you can license it out, you know what I'm saying? Like a non-Disney thing to come to the parks, whether Disneyland, Florida, whatever. All right. Well, obviously, I was super biased, and I actually DM'd uh, Tones about this. Sonic. <laughs> Sonic, <laughs> like yeah. It. All right. I well, because like I'm a huge Sonic fan, and also, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog, it's a very family-friendly oriented um, IP. So I and you know so I I think, I think that would do well at least in, in my opinion you know uh, songs I like again I love that franchise. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean it, it it will sell its own with like a a actual roller coaster that you know goes as fast not as fast as Sonic because he goes pretty damn fast. But, <laughs> but yeah. a roller coaster of Sonic everyone would fucking love like that would be yeah. perfect. Dude, dude, oh. you know, dude, you know, sick a indoor 
Sonic roller coaster, right? Your coaster's blue. It has like electricity coming off the coaster or something yeah. like that, right? And you're going through, I don't, um, like, like like the arc or or like any of the levels, like City Escape or anything. That'd be really cool. I think I think a Sonic one would be. Uh, it makes more sense than a Incredicoaster uh, ride, because I don't. When I think of roller coasters, I don't think of Incredicoaster. You know what I'm saying? That that Incredicoaster was kind of shoehorned in. It was like around the time I think that the second movie was coming out, and they were like, "Yeah, we'll make it Incredibles." And it was like, I agree with you. I think that ride, that theme, doesn't really work. Like, I guess. It, the Sonic, <laughs> the Sonic. Yeah, Sonic. <laughs> yeah, and it's like with, with the Incredicoaster, it's like what I would have done if, if you're going to put it on the pier because it was a seaside pier kind of vibe, right? Yep. Kind of go with that carnival like strongman thing, like for Mr. Incredible. I think that might have worked, you know, because then it's like, okay, you're using the Mr. Incredible IP, but it's like kind of it kind of like you, you're, you're you're kind of redirectioning it where it's like now it's like a strongman thing right so it fits that pier kind of like similar to what they did with midway mania they took the toy story theme and turned it into like uh you know the, the midway games right you can do something like that and kind of kind of twerk the ip a little bit but they didn't do that they just took the incredibles and just put them on this coaster and it, it doesn't make much sense it, it's really a hodgepodge right right, but, uh, right see so, uh, so sorry g um so like you have universal right they'll have nintendo disney will have sonic you know, sonic <laughs> there you go no exactly they, 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 in, in, like t like you guys are right though like when terms of like a coaster or like some sort of like like thrill ride i mean sonic would be crazy bro now now would you want to buy that ip or would you want to uh contract it out um so that's things like that so sonic as a ip right it's been it's had its its ups and has its downs it, it's literally a roller coaster of this fucking franchise right <laughs> you know oh, so, but yeah. right now like the past you know ever since sonic 1 came out and we have sonic mania um you know sonic generation sonic colors right these have really been upward momentum of sonic but then he has one game that comes out and <laughs> crashes yeah. so you know um there's been a lot of good and a lot of bad so um, I think they should license that probably and keep that for a while and then really have Sega up the quality on the Sonic franchise as a whole. And then maybe one day, right, if it's like still doing banger numbers, then you buy it out. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Right. What, what about you, Slimer? What what outside IP would you bring to, to uh, the Disney parks? Um, I wouldn't bring any outside IP. But what I would do if I were Disney is I would try to find um, specific ips within fox which they own and try <laughs> to bring them into the disney umbrella Fair. right now right now they're very segregated you know the disney brand and the fox brand mm -hmm. but i but i feel like a lot of that is just due to the fact that they haven't spent enough time trying to figure out okay what else can we bring underneath the disney umbrella that is you know fox but also very disney at the same time i think planet of the apes would be a, a fantastic way to incorporate fox into the uh into the theme park arena by bringing them into animal kingdom. Um, I'm not, again, I, I don't necessarily, I'm not a big planet of the apes fan. I just think as a, as an intellectual property, it suits very nicely in the animal kingdom. Oh, when, it yeah. comes, when it comes to universal studios, ghostbusters. Yeah. Oh dude. Yeah. Ghostbusters that... would be sick, bro. Shocker. <laughs> I mean, shocker. yeah. I mean, this, well, it's a, it's, it's, yeah. Shocker. But, <laughs> But it's a 40 year old IP that has yeah. long, long legs. I mean, this thing, oh, yeah. it was killed in the 90s. And this thing is, I mean, <laughs> it's been resurrected and like it just won't die. So, like at this point, just go ahead and, you know, buy a 30 year contract and, you know, put that in the park until a hurricane blows the, the entire theme park over. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, I got to ask you. So, it's, I, so Ghostbusters, it's not a universal IP though, or is no, it? No, that, that's Columbia Sony Pictures. Oh, interesting. Okay. See, and the uh, perfect ride would be you sitting in not, I mean, in a car, but you would be. It would kind of be like that um, Indiana Jones kind of concept where you're in the car chasing a fucking go, uh, a ghost around. And, oh, dude, dude that'd like be perfect, bro. Yeah. 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 Dude, you can make it interactive. You can make it yeah. interactive. like like Tony was saying. You're in that. You're in the vehicle, and you're going through. You're 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 catching ghosts. Yeah, and, you're like, you know, yeah. like <laughs> that'd be yeah, dope, dude. And now, now, now you said you you would uh just u utilize that inside the park or what they own already and put something in there. I like that too. I like that. Yeah. I like the hero. Oh, gee, I like the heroes and legends idea. 
Well, thank you. Yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool, right? To have like you can incorporate a lot of cool IP in there. You can do like Lord of the Rings. You can do Game of Thrones. Um, you can even do like another take on Star Wars. You know, if you mm. want to do the original trilogy, that would fit into Heroes and Legends. Absolutely. Um, if you need something for the kiddies, you can do like a Hercules thing or something, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of opportunity there that they could do if they wanted to do it, you know? So, so it's a little darker, a little grittier, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll, dude, I would like to see uh, something based off of Ripley's Aliens. I mean, obviously oh, that's, owned by, mm. that's owned by Disney now, but Aliens, I mean, they used to have a small presence in the, movie, the great movie ride. But I think everybody wants everybody wants a a, a a real alien experience because that would just be so dope. Dude. Let's bring in the predator too. There yeah. you go. Yeah, that'd yeah. be Absolutely, sick, man. man. Exactly, exactly. And these are cool properties because what you could do if you if you put it into like a, if it's like a separate park, right? Like not a castle park, right? Not like Disneyland right. or like Magic yeah. Kingdom, but it's own separate yeah. thing. And then you can have that you can have that that edge to it, right? Like yeah. you have like. Yeah. You know, Game of Thrones, you have like Predator, Alien, all that good stuff. And it's like what that does is it also sort of gives Disney like their answer to Universal. Because right. Universal has that edge, you know what I'm saying? Right, it does. But, but edgier. Like they yeah. got edgier than Universal. And that's a ballsy <laughs> move, man. That's a ballsy move. It's ballsy. It's absolutely that would, ballsy. That would pay off. I think so. I think so, too. I think it would be pretty cool. Now, Slimer, real quick. It's kind of our topic, but what's going on are there rumors right now speaking of ghostbusters that they might do like universal might might do a like a ghostbuster like house for haunted horror nights or you've been tweeting about that stuff i was wondering have you heard anything so so a couple of things uh so this year marks the 40th anniversary of a nightmare on elm street and ghostbusters oh yeah those wow. are two great yeah, those are two very and, and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, but I don't think I don't think that uh, Universal Studios is going to do anything with that. I don't think Disney would allow it. Yeah. But then again, but then again, they might. I mean, it, they they might. I think that would be really cool to have Temple of Doom. I'm going to answer your question too, but to have De Temple of Doom, Ghostbusters, and a Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween Horror Nights would be fucking dope, dude. I'd dude. fucking be there. But, yeah, I know. I'm telling you, a, a Ghostbusters like house would be dope. I think it'd be really, really cool. So yeah, with the with the 40th anniversaries of those two, uh, three particular movies, there is a high likelihood that they're going to do it just because they like to celebrate movies on their 40th anniversary or any anniversary for that matter. The other thing is, is uh, Universal Studios actually purchased an Ecto one off of Facebook. Apparently, it's in two pieces, so they're probably going to utilize that in a house um or in in the summer tribute store um nice. they could also use that in a scare zone too they also have the new movie coming out this year so the and and, and like i said usually the the universal creatives put out rumors um and then they're like uh not rumors they're like um what do you call them like clues right so yeah so the the hhn fandom can try to you know determine what the encrypted clues are saying about what's coming to halloween horror nights this year and um yeah i think ghostbusters might be on that short list i think it'd be a smart move if they did i think that that franchise yeah. while it's not universal it feels like universal it does it, yeah. it does you know yeah i think it was actually handpicked by steven spielberg um to go into universal when they opened it in 1990. wow now speaking of spielberg i didn't we didn't talk about this in our uh, epic universe video mm -hmm. but he was involved in this park epic universe I mean that's that was announced. Wow. That's official. That was on their on their big, um, you know, spread their big video promotional video. They 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 dropped that Steven Spielberg was involved. Now Steven Spielberg has a close relationship with Universal, yeah. um, for years and years and years. But it's like that's really. I mean, I, he's my favorite director. I mean, this yeah. guy he doesn't miss. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like this yeah. guy does not miss. That that bodes well for this park. I tell you that much. I mean, I'm. Hey. Hey, let yeah. me ask you this. Let me ask you this, guys. Um, looking at the architecture, looking at the fact that they're using astronomy and celestial objects, that really ties into like the universal brand, right? Like, I mean, that's oh yeah, the universe. Universal. I, 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 actually, Slime, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, right? Is as much as I, I, because I do, I love our Disney logo, right? Like the intro. Yeah. Universal is like my second, dude. I love that intro. Yeah. Dun, 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 you know i think it's really good it's, it's it's like it's like this very powerful godly you know music piece right it's just so yeah. cool i love it, it no, yeah. I, I agree with you uh, Emma. and this is actually one of the things i love about universal parks is that when you walk into universal parks they 
don't care, bro. Like they crank that shit up to like eleven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that music is so loud, dude, and it's it just gets you hyped, man. It yeah. just does. You can't you can't help it. I actually have a funny thing. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys. This is an old an old um, an old uh, intro I had like from years ago when I used to do like um, like when I did Universal videos. I would I would use this one. I'll play it for you guys real quick because it's like so Universal. You'll get a kick awesome. out of it. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, <laughs> that's dope, dude. That is freaking dope. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to start bringing that one back. You know what I'm saying? Yes, please do. You have please to, do. bro. You have to, man. That's really good. <laughs> well, I, I got a, I got another quick question for you guys. Um, sure. One, one IP that I'm really surprised is not, uh, not you know being pretty much bidded after is um, a Star Trek kind of IP that they can make in the put in the uh, put in the parks and stuff like that. I know they have them at like Great America and Paramount's like um, I, I'm not sure about Star Trek, but I know Paramount has rides in certain parks, but mm-hmm. like I, you would think Star Trek would be in either Universal or or you know, Disney. No? You, you would think you would think go ahead, Simer. Well, I was going to say uh, the parks have been chasing Star Trek for a very long time. Have they? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Paramount does. Paramount. You got, you got to remember. So Star Trek is Paramount's number one IP. Mm-hmm. It, it, it basically floats Paramount Plus. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Like, if, I don't know if you guys have Paramount Plus, but if you do, go to the homepage or, you know, just the main menu and look how much they showcase Star Trek. Now, yeah. funny, now, funnily enough, they just most recently licensed out all the Star Trek movies to Netflix. And so none of them are on Paramount Plus right now. So that, wow. t- that yeah, so that tells me a couple of things. Uh, they don't have the subscriptions that they want from Star Trek. Mm-hmm. So they're going to try to make up that revenue on the back end by licensing out to Netflix, which absolutely will just because of the sheer subscriber numbers that they have versus their own streaming service. So they're going to make more money that way. And uh, with regard to them, you know, licensing it out to a park, um, yeah, you're right. Like, why hasn't it? Because Star Trek is a banger property, and that'd make a break a banger attraction as well. I mean, imagine it's like, it, it's kind of like a uh, Galaxy's Edge or not Galaxy's Edge, Rise of the Resistance, where it's oh, yeah. extremely, you know extremely immersive. Like, you get on a shuttle, flies you to the USS Enterprise. You know, you're seeing yourself being flown over there in like a big freaking OLED screen, so it looks like you're <laughs> actually going over there. And then you get on the bridge for a training mission, and then it ends, you know, the training mission ends up being an actual mission, you know, trying to save a planet from like, you know, the Klingons or the Borgs. And you have the big screen, you know, and everybody that's sitting in the bridge has their own assignment that they have to do, but it's not like too serious, like, you know, dude, like, that would be sick, dude. I could see that. I could definitely see that at Universal. That's a Universal yeah. thing, I think. Oh, yeah. I could definitely see that at Universal. They that they would they would they would do very well with that. Yeah, man, I, I would be on board with something like that. I mean, I mean, and Star Trek is is one of those properties where it's proven itself. It's it's an evergreen kind of thing, right? Where it like it might ebb and flow in popularity over the years, but at its core, it's always in like the pop culture zeitgeist, so to speak, right? It's yeah. it's always going to be around. I think it, it's it's a it's a, it would be a smart move. I think it would be a really really smart move. We'll yep. see. We'll see what happens. I remember there used to be actually a, a Star Trek attraction at the Las Vegas Hilton years yeah. ago. Yeah, boy, like early two thousands, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. like like mid nineties, early two thousands, around that era or whatever. And now, I think it's gone now, unfortunately. But, and the merchant and the merchandising abilities of Star Trek is just. I mean, it's endless. I mean, they, they, I, I swear, Star Trek probably sells as much merchandise as Star Wars. Like, just not, not like, uh, not obviously, you know. Yeah. But the, Star, the Trekkies buy it online. Trust oh, me. Abs- absolutely. <laughs> I'm still tripping out that you were saying that Universal bought that that uh, Ecto One car on what Facebook? Uh, yeah, <laughs> they bought it on Facebook. Yeah. That is hilarious, man. Wait, say that, wait, 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 say that again. They well, they bought an Ecto One on Facebook. I th- I think it was in two pieces, and I think that uh, it had par- it had previously been utilized as a two part display. So you would display the front end on one side, and then have the back end somewhere else. So yeah. they might be using that for the summer tribute store, or they might be using it for the Halloween Horror Night store, or it might go into either a land or or a house. 
I think they might do a land and a house this year. And uh, they might turn the New York area into the, uh, you know, frozen, uh, you know, the frozen empire themes, you know, oh. so. That'd be cool. Yeah, I think that'd, that'd be, be cool. sick. That's yeah, perfect, yeah. man. That's perfect. We still have to do. We still have to do that Ghostbuster show with Jay Shear on Story Geeks. Yeah, yeah we, Michael, you want to get on that? We're gonna we're gonna talk about. Uh, I think it's just gonna be like a pop culture influence show on Ghostbusters. Oh, cool. All right. Mm. That'd be dope, dude. That'd be dope, gentlemen. I want to thank you so much for joining today. Always a good time with you guys. Always, always a good time with you guys. I'm gonna start with. Uh, yeah, I'll start with tones. Tones. I appreciate you, brother, talking shop sure. with us. Always a pleasure, sir. If you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Yeah, man. Once again, thank you for having me. You know, I always love talking talking stuff with you guys. Um, guys, find me at tones underscore TV, all platforms. Uh, bad Thoughts Podcast and Bad Thoughts Studios. Uh, find those on YouTube. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing, uh, you know, interviews and stuff like that, go to the podcast and check it out. You guys will love it. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Actually, on the end of this video, I'm going to I'm going to link the um, the Bad Thought Studio show we did last night about fandom. It was such a in, great episode. I, I I watched it over and over. It's so, like twice today. It was such it a good was, episode. It's so good, you guys. You guys, everyone, everyone at home, you have to watch that. I'll link it at the very end um, on the end screen. Um, so it'll be there. Click on it and and check it out. It's a fantastic conversation. Um, and, and make sure you follow this gentleman and the Bad Thoughts uh, podcast on all, all platforms. Slimer, if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Man. You can find me right here in Orange Grove 55. Uh, you can find me on Bad Thoughts podcast. And Tony, if you want to do part two of that conversation, uh, I'm, I'm for part two of that conversation. Oh, hell yeah. And hell on, yeah. X, on X, you can find me at Slime Square 84. There we go. There we go. You know, Tones, we should figure out a way. I, I'm still working with the StreamYard thing, but um, – I think there's a way we can actually like simulcast stuff. Really? Like we can have it pr premiere on both channels, bro. We yeah. should do that for part two. I'm so down. Oh yeah, I'm I'm definitely down for that. I'm de if you can find a way, just let me know and we'll set it up. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk to Theme Park Casual because I think they do they do something similar with their theme park show, um, like biweekly. I'll reach out to them and see and see what uh, we can do because that'd be fun, dude. That'd be a lot of oh, fun. Yeah. Oh e yeah. E Eva, our uh, Sonic, our Sonic fan. If you, let everybody bad, home, <laughs> if you can let everybody know where they can find you on social media uh yes so uh, you can find me on um uh, instagram michael Ebba, and then you can also find me on twitter slash x at michael Ebba 1991 there it is follow this man follow all these fine gentlemen uh thank you all so so much for watching comment down below with all your thoughts on everything we talked about today in terms of ip you know, owning it, not owning it. I think it's a really, really interesting conversation. So we'd love to hear for your input on that. Comment down below. As always, we appreciate all your support here on OG55. And as always, have a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs>